Unspoiled Network Podcast. This is Some Spoil, the Song of Ice and Fire 2, the co-host switcheroo, the re-reading return to Westeros, HBO spoiler edition, uncut, uncensored, and not, not our best work sometimes, but we're <laughs> trying. In these chapters, which are Tyrion and Davos, Tyrion has been taken off the booze. And put on the wagon. The wagon is hella bumpy. <laughs> Davos, meanwhile, he's getting some bad news and feels a little bit bleak at the moment. Welcome to Unspoiled. Monsters are dangerous, and just now, kings are dying like flies. I am the king! Fuck the king. Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Natasha. I'm Rashawn. Oh, boy. You guys. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) These chapters. Oh man, there's this is a uh, I I miss Illyrio. That's what, yeah. that's all I'll say. I don't mind a road trip when the two all of them the are trading barbs, you know. And, and the, also, you have the comforts too. Illyrio is about sure. the comforts. We were comfortable. We were well fed, and we were drunk most of the time. It was <laughs> fabulous for everyone involved. This this transport, this is a lot to be desired. For the birds. Right? It for is the for the birds. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's no comfortable place to sleep. Uh, there's no wine and cheese. There's no funny banter. This this whole thing is just, mm yeah. You might as well be at the wall. The vibes are yeah. off. <laughs> <laughs> So we start off like Tyrion's going through DTs and he's sleeping on the deck because it's like slightly better, but it's still really, really uncomfortable. And we know he struggles with like cramping and body aches anyway, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but this combined with like not drinking right now is making it way worse. And I love the fact that like uh, Griff is the one who, who took his, Listen, he got drink a chance to drink him. one. He had a chance to drink one night, like on the first night on the boat, and after that, they were like, "You know what? That's it for you." Oh my god, <laughs> that's it. You're cut off. Like, how bad did he have to get that after one night? They were like, "You know what? We can't let this motherfucker drink. Let's just everybody, everybody, see this guy. Don't serve him." Like, yeah. Like, how bad was that first night? <laughs> Wine helps me sleep. Tyrion had protested. Then stay awake, Griff had replied, implacable. <laughs> this guy is such a killjoy. He is. He, uh, I had said, you know, when we first started meeting him, like, he just did not seem like he was going to be any fun whatsoever. Like, there's nothing going to be fun about this trip. And I was so right. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah, this, this dude is just really not. He's not playful. He's not, like, he doesn't give Tyrion grace. He's just, like you're being a fucking clown he really gives tywin in a lot of ways actually he um there's a moment when Tyrion is comparing this guy to Bronn because he's like you know this is not my first sellsword that i've ever met like this guy Mm -hmm. is cut from the same cloth but he's got none of Bronn's like black humor uh like none of his wit and it made me think like my memory is such such garbage right but but cobbled together from what I can remember from these books and the impressions I got from the TV show, cell swords usually work, unless I'm wildly mistaken, presented kind of like these, what's a word for them? These like sort of like devil may care, swaggering, you know, a lot of charisma kind of, you know, because I'm out here literally selling my sword to the highest bidder. You know, I'm out here 
you know, like I'm basically a land pirate, you know, I'm just, and, and they just, I don't know. This guy is so dour. He's so self-serious and so dour like, is a really good word. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, it's, I don't know what to, I mean, I don't, I guess I'm generalizing and stereotyping cell swords here and my deepest apologies to the cell sword community <laughs> from any offense. But, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry if you were offended. She said, textbook non-apology am i right everybody <laughs> but um i mean they're only cell sores i mean you know oh right right I'm, just got, punch. I'm doubling down y'all i'm doubling down <laughs> i'm gonna call your agent they need to rein you in ma'am um but but you know what i mean like he doesn't have any of that energy and i'm curious like I mean, again, like I am painting a lot of people with one brush, so, you know, take it for what it's worth. But he just is so different than what I think I've come to expect expect from these types of characters. And I can't, I don't know if I'm, there's something just different about him, but I don't know what it is. Something is not, something is not right, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Do you know what I mean, though? Am I crazy am i being crazy? in terms of what you like when you say something's not right do you mean i don't think he's a sellsword or do you mean well, like he there's something like mentally wrong with him okay or no i i think maybe like maybe whatever his backstory is like he might be a sellsword you know like he says that's what he is and i don't really have anything to prove he's not but maybe he wasn't always like i don't know maybe he's got some really deep dark tragic backstory that i don't know yet and that's why you know he's so so serious and i don't know i don't know i don't know but it just it just popped into my head that when when Tyrion made the comparison to Bronn, and it because it got me thinking about you know the ones that we've met through daenerys's povs you know and the kind of like what's her boy's name dario you know yes He's another one that's just like swashbuckling all over the fucking place. <laughs> He's swashing left and right. <laughs> throws a buckle in here or there. So I don't know. I just like like he <laughs> throws a buckle in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, these so types. <laughs> um so I don't, I don't know. I really don't have anything else to offer about that. I just wanted to mention that it just got my brain kind of itchy, but I don't, I don't know if it's I going. Do not anywhere. care for that. No, you know what I mean. Though, when your I do goes, know what you mean, and that's why goes. I don't like it. Like it, yeah. I felt it when you said it. It was too. <laughs> oh, good. It was that's, too good. That's what I. That's what I was going for. I wanted you to <laughs> really feel what I was saying. But. Um, <laughs> But so, yeah, so Griff is just, he's not here for, for a good time. He's not here for a long time or a good time. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so, yeah, he's he's coming down from this. And, uh, like, the whole energy of this is another day on the Shy Maid. And he has yeah. gotten used to the, like, routine of things. Um and this septa i love her she comes out here and is like how did you sleep and he's like fitfully i dreamed of you and he's like whacked off to you mm -hmm. and she knows like you can see she a hundred percent knows exactly knows. what he means she knows <laughs> she a hundred percent knows and i and like she's like you know she goes out and she bathes every day she's got like no uh, qualms about like being like overly modest or anything. She's just taking off her robes and jumping in the river. And if anybody is watching, oh well. Oops. Um, and and then when called on it, she she hits with the uh, you know we're all made in the gods and mothers you know image. There's nothing to be ashamed of. And girl, we all sleep. We know what you're doing. We know yep. what you're doing, man. <laughs> I'm not judging you for doing it, but we know what not you're a bit. Doing. I've been there. I've done this sort of thing. <laughs> and she has stretch marks on her stomach. So, you know, it's uh, clearly she has not been a nun uh, either her whole life or she's had some slips or who knows. So, here, when I read that line, because I, I don't know, right? 
mm-hmm. is that like I feel like there are women who have stretch marks that were not pregnant. Definitely. That, and this like, oh, she's got stretch marks. That means she must have had a baby. I was like, George Martin, are you sure? <laughs> it's definitely a not a universal thing. There are placements of stretch marks that can be a lot more indicative of like a very sudden increase in size that was only in one area. Like I have stretch marks from weight gain, but I have them in a few different places. And if you only grew in your stomach area, you're not going to have stretch marks like on your underarms, for example, like I have it in that spot sort of thing. I have had stretch marks on my knees since I was a little girl. I don't know if everybody gets that. On your knees? Yep. Interesting. Yep. And I've had them since I was very, very little. Like, yeah, but I've got stretch marks on my legs. And it was not from weight gain. It may be, maybe I grew a couple inches too fast. I mean, if that's a thing, I really don't know. (laughs) But yeah, I've had some little girl. So, So I have never associated stretch marks with just gaining in weight or pregnancy because I've, I've always been like, I was a hundred pounds until I was 40 and I've had stretch marks on my legs since I was like seven. <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah, it's like, it's not really, it's just for Tyrion to right. feel like he so, knows things, right. you know, for a second, I, for a second, I was like, are we going to have to put George Martin in that club of men who write ridiculous things about women's bodies? Cause they have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. Like that's how it I is. think it's like a tiny bit that, but also, you're not supposed to like question it too much and just accept mm. the the interpretation that Tyrion has about it. Mm. But yeah, I mean, and people can like get stretch marks from gaining muscle as well. It doesn't necessarily just any sudden changes in your body can cause it. So, mm. you know, but yeah. yeah. So I don't know if I'm supposed to believe. And really my whole point about that was thinking about it more was me being like, it, can I trust Tyrion here? Is this right? I mean, you, know, this- you can't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's like you can take it in under advisement. Yeah. But he really yeah. is just not super reliable lately. That that is true, isn't it? Yeah. Poor Tyrion. So uh, this uh, thing with the scepter. There's also. Um, Part of the day is this this kid, this young Griff kid. This, mm-hmm. this he's, there's a lot about what his day is like in this chapter. Um, you know, he spends time practicing with weapons with one of these men. I forget who it is. Maybe I don't know which one of them it is. He he uh, spars with. Right. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and open Austin's Info Corner. Ooh. Just to, and then uh, we spend a lot of time with Tyrion actually sitting in on his lessons with the maester or the half maester. And this kid is getting some really fancy schooling, y'all. Yeah. He's like a really impressive education. He speaks like five languages. He's learning geometry and fucking all. Like he's really getting set up for something. Mm hmm um yeah he this is some incredible formal education for on a boat on a river this is what i am saying yeah (laughs) and he is just uh and i say just but you guys i'm not trying to be classes but he is the son of a sellsword right Mm mm-hmm I mean, I guess it's cool to want better for your kids. And what's the point of selling your soul if you can't buy like the very best education for your kids? So it's not even that crazy to think about, right? If that's the motivation, like you want something better for your kid. Yeah. But I mean, but but it seems, I don't know. I don't know, y'all. Something's, I don't know. I don't know. And I know this is this is no fun to listen to as a podcast. I just I don't know. Something is <laughs> feels weird. Just I can't put my finger on it though. But but I, I don't want to harp on it too much because I don't really have more more to say. But I just want you guys to know that my brain is very itchy. <laughs> I feel like I'm being told something and it's like fucking right in my face and I'm not getting it because I don't remember something really important or. Why it's you reminded really- me of Elaine in Seinfeld <laughs> going, I just want you to know that I'm aware of it. <laughs> you are the queen of confrontation. 
Yeah, just make me think of that. <laughs> yeah, so I just want you guys to be aware that I am aware that there's something <laughs> something afoot, and I just don't know what it is. <laughs> oh, God. Well, if there is, I can't tell you. Yeah, I would know. Worse. <laughs> yeah, oh. Hmm. <laughs> is there? I didn't notice anything. Um, so this, like the, the whole thing with Lamore, he, <laughs> there are all these giant turtles and he keeps being like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm looking at, uh, turtles. I love a couple of nice shells. <laughs> just I, like, really? I almost gave up on this whole thing. At that line i really did i almost <laughs> i almost cut this whole thing short just like that's it that's it we're done here <laughs> oh i really do like that Tyrion is witty and fun but they're not all gonna be winners nope nope, nope. you know sometimes he's just 12 years old and i relate to that very deeply in my heart yeah, and a man has had a rough couple of weeks. You know, he killed yep. his father. He was on the run. He was in that that barrel for a long time. He hasn't had a drink, so he's not really at a hundred percent, right? So we can't expect him to be giving us the quality that we've grown accustomed to. So we kind of got to give him a pass, right? I mean, I maybe we kind of <laughs> got I don't know. You sound unconvinced. <laughs> it's it's. I am willing to, but that makes it sound as if he is entitled to that. And I am not <laughs> entirely on board with that. Uh, look, the thing is, he has been through it, but he is also w really wallowing to a point mm -hmm. that I'm, be I'm beginning to lose a little bit of patience with, you know? Well, he's been like his lot in life. It's it, he's been moving every moment, right, and been at the mercy of other people uh, to to keep him alive, to keep him fed, to keep him in these ridic ridiculous outfits. Because at one point he finally does change clothes. He won't bathe because he doesn't want to take his clothes off, specifically in front of the septa, which I thought was really interesting. Hmm. But um, but he does change clothes at one point after he gets tossed into the river. <laughs> Yeah. And he comes out dressed in like this motley that I'm assuming is kind of like what the mummers oh would wear. And yeah. I guess the cover story is important, but my heart broke a little bit. Just a little bit. It's I really like the combination of being made to wear this and that he was like made to help her make it. Mm -hmm. Which he knows that the reason they did it this way was to be insulting to him. Yep. And he just decided to try and let it roll off a little bit. Oh, boy. I yeah. just really, I, I hated that for him. Yeah. He uh, does a moment where he does like a little cartwheel on the deck. Um, I think it's after he comes back up from being tossed in the water. And it prompts a memory of his to being a child and learning to tumble from one of his uncles and how much happiness and joy it brought him. And he would like, he learned all these tricks and could stand on his hands. And then Tywin comes home from King's Landing and Tyrion is like so excited to show him. And his father is just like, gross. Now you're going to yeah. you know, gonna be a fool on top of a monster or whatever the fuck he says to him. And I swear to God, you're just like, for fuck's sakes, Tywin. For mm -hmm. fuck's sakes, he's a he's like seven years old, dude. Come on, yeah, yeah. Mm. Tywin is such a piece of shit. Yeah. Truly, he is. Like he is fucking the <sighs> fucking poster boy of why not everybody should have kids. You know, <laughs> like Jesus. It's just you know he is very like basically anything that people that makes people laugh is like triggering for him. Mm -hmm. And Tyrion's out here trying to make people laugh and it probably feels like a slap in the face to everything that right. he has been attempting to build with their family name right but then, like, you know the, get over it and then his father being like a laughing stock you know mm -hmm. i was mm -hmm. father i mean so yeah he just doesn't have any what a sad way to move through the world with like out humor 
you know very much yeah um what a just like small small way to live my goodness so that's the uh the energy here in the morning then we have the beginnings of breakfast and everything stealing biscuits from isilla who's the cook um and Tyrion is like taking a piss with Yandri at one point and talking about how, oh, we're making the river even mightier. And Yandri says something like, ah, uh, trust me, this river don't need no help. And mm -hmm. Tyrion's like, well, I've seen rivers like this at home. And he's like, you'll see. And eventually we do reach a point where Tyrion is like, holy shit. Yeah, I really Because <laughs> it joins in with another river and it is wide as hell. Yeah, I like that moment. It's it's one of the, you know, whenever we have Tyrion being like speechless, being like, because he, he knows, you know, he's always the smartest guy in the room and you can't tell him nothing. He already knows everything. And, and having a moment Definitely. where he was just like, oh shit, I was fucked up. Like, I, I stand yep. corrected. <laughs> I love those moments. Yeah, I mean, I can understand him feeling like he know because he's done so much reading that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to a degree... There, there are fewer surprises in the world for him because he is so well educated and he really, it's not, it was not just obligatory. He enjoyed it. So he really pursued more information actively. But uh, even if you read about something that does not mean that you're prepared to see it, mm -hmm. which, uh, this was my energy when I went to the Grand Canyon the first time. Have you been to Grand Canyon? No, I have not. I have got like no interest in that. That sounds. I did not horrible. either. I and I have a bad fear of heights, so I was just sort of like, uh, "All right, we're going to this because this is the thing you do." I was with my parents, but wow, yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. It just feels like you're on another planet, and it yeah. makes you feel so small and like the just there. It just feels so alien. Mm. And it is, it is the immensity and enormity of it and the amount of time that had to have passed for it to be achieved. It just feels so humbling. You're just like, mm. I'm a, I'm a, I'm an insect on the surface I of would, this planet. I am, you know what I mean? I'm a bacteria. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an insignificant speck on a half. What does Homer say? I'm an insignificant speck on a half forgotten rock hurtling through space or something or has been a has been rock <laughs> hurtling through space not a has been that's, has that's been. not fair to say about earth homer that's not necessarily <laughs> true ouch <laughs> Uh, I would love to see it and also simultaneously have no interest in actually doing what it would require, which is like the walking up it or to it or being anywhere near it that high. Cause I'm so terrified of heights. Um, you actually can, you don't like, you can just drive to the parking lot of the huge observation building and go inside the building and view it from inside the building. So you can experience it without being out in the open it's not exact it doesn't feel quite the same but it's certainly mm. like still a real experience and i mm. think that they are aware of people's fear of heights and so they tried purposely to sort of make it accessible and there's also a restaurant that you can dine in that has like a full view and everything oh god it's real. It's really something. It really I is. Can't I can't even uh, look out the windows of my office for more than a few seconds at a time. Oh <laughs> no! Yeah, that's. Yeah. If you can't do that, then probably yeah, even it's out not the for window me. might not be. Yeah, because I have a bad me. fear of heights, but it's when I am behind glass or something. Yeah, no. I can still get a little bit of a whoop in my stomach, but I can look it doesn't bother me the same way you know there's somebody is always trying to point some shit out the window to me because there's all kinds of shit going on there's always something happening in the city there's always like people on a roof somewhere and people are like oh what are they doing over there there's some building near me they have like a bonfire on the roof we can't figure out what the fuck's going on what? but they got like a little bonfire yeah so there's somebody's always trying to get me to look out the window and i can i 15 seconds tops and then i that's it i'm done if i can't see what you're showing me in less than 15 seconds Rashawn's not going to see it she has to step back she's got to step away from the window 
<laughs> you just saying that in third person all of a sudden. I just really appreciate that. <laughs> but um Rashawn so can't fuck. look. Rashawn has other things to do. <laughs> this is what happens when she gets stressed by heights. It's the third person pops out and you know, uh oh, okay. That's how you away. know, that's a sign. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Like just thinking about the, you didn't even say that the view from the restaurant was floor to ceiling. I just assumed it was and then made myself a little woozy. It's probably floor to ceiling. Like if right. you're going to do it, you're probably going to do it. That's what they're going to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, nope. Nope. I hate that for me. <laughs> I'm going to miss out on a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> uh, so um, and there's a, uh, a lot of like abandoned cities and things that are overgrown that they pass by as well mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. just a, a real sense of like shit has gone down around here yeah and there is so much like there's so much space that people aren't coming back in and repairing things or resettling in places they just stay as ruins yeah they just which is sort of interesting on. yeah you know um, oh my God. It's Sir Raleigh that Griff is, is doing sword play with and Tyrion oh, just goes play. into the river or wait, no, Raleigh goes into the river at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Let's see yeah, how the dwarves swim and he, he throws him in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, um, so the, there's, there's also like a wife of, or the, the one that's making breakfast, which sounded so good, y'all. I want some bacon so bad. And biscuits. Um, yeah. Mm. Uh and I like this we find out that this is their like little pole boat and um they get a room. Um Halden gets a room and then there's one other bedroom, but I forget I think Griff and the in the younger Griff get it. Yeah, I think and so. Everybody else on the boat just has got to fucking try to get in where they fit in. Um and I don't know like how big this thing is supposed to be, but it seems like everybody is moving around fairly comfortably. Mm -hmm. But I also get the impression because of the description of the boat being sort of like small and narrowed so that it can navigate and get places larger vessels, you know, wouldn't be able to get into. Yeah. But they got like a nice handful of people that are living on this. And they also don't sail at night. Like they park overnight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. So this whole thing, it was it was reminding me of like like a family taking like an RV trip. Yeah, <laughs> or like you a know, tour bus loaded you know, with like the entourage. Right? Yeah, it feels like that though, right? So yep. I was like, uh, and so then it made me even sadder that that some of the people that Tyrion is traveling with, mainly Griff, it howled in a little bit. Are like because this could be like a great time. We should be telling body stories and laughing, and you know, you know what I mean. Like this could be a road trip. And listen, I already <laughs> been saying the vibes are off. <laughs> Shit's weird. <laughs> um, yeah. And then uh, what else do we have? I think after he he uh, does the sparring, um, is when he goes and sits in on the lessons with the the half master. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and why does he have him doing that again? He, he invites Tyrion to sit in, but it's to it's to kind of help, right? Um, I feel like he was talking. So they play this game called Shabas, and uh, I feel like there's a conversation that comes up in that like game where he's like talking about the reason behind making certain moves, and then the dude is like, "Well, you know." It seems like you know a lot. There's like a kind of ongoing joke because Tyrion keeps just making up these wild stories about where he's from when he very clearly is like well-educated and has an upper class accent. And he knows that everybody is aware he's full of shit, but he can't help but like really do it up with the mm -hmm. stories and everything. Mm -hmm. So this guy is sort of... You know, well, you seem to uh, know a whole lot, though, for somebody in your position. Maybe you want to come sit up, sit in on yeah. this, you know, like I lesson. Know. 
towards the end, he ends up giving Tyrion this task of like basically write down everything you learned about dragons, like just everything you know. I need you to write down towards the mm-hmm. end of the chapter. But uh, I like the part. Isn't that game? Isn't that the same game that they were playing in Dorne? Shavas, yes. Uh-huh. Mm, I like that little detail. Um, but when he asks him if he wants to come sit in with the lesson, Tyrion is just like, well, yeah, because somebody's got to correct all your mistakes. Um, which, He's such again, a little shit. He really is. He cannot help himself. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it was just the way he asked him. He's like, you know, will you be joining us for, for the lesson? And it felt like it could have been the first time. Like there's nothing clearly about this that says that this has been going on, but something about about it makes me feel like this isn't the first time that he's joined them. It was kind of mm. like, you know, will you be joining us this evening? You know, you joined us last night, but I didn't want to assume you'd right. be here tonight. Um, and yeah, to your point about the stories that he's making up, Tyrion is really enjoying because he's like, I gotta season my lies with a little bit of truth, you know? So I uh, I know what I sound like to these people. So the best story is going to be that I'm basically some lord's bastard, you know, and right. was was kept and, and educated, but not really get getting to use the family name. And that's believable, right? That's a thing that happens. I mean, yeah, yeah. I I, I don't think it's outlandish, and that that would be necessary. Like, I think that people can guess that he's lying but they just can't zero in on the specifics of it Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you give them something that's uh they're mostly not going to question and Mm -hmm. that'll basically just kind of kill their interest until maybe something else comes up in conversation i love that uh maester is just like uh what was the name of that street you said you were born on like trying to catch him in a lie Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) and Tyrion is like didn't have a name wasn't a street just was an alley <laughs> yeah i do enjoy the the what's the the word i want here the improv aspect mm. of it like because it doesn't feel like Tyrion's spending his downtime going all right gotta come up with a convincing story it seems like mm-hmm. the fun of it for him is just spinning it in the moment and seeing what he spits out you know yeah he's definitely not keeping a ledger of all his lies and trying to keep them all straight like remember what i told so and so on such and such date so i don't contradict it later um but uh and and then it doesn't you know but then the other side of that is how close are people paying attention and this tells us that halden is paying attention so if nothing it just lets me know oh i'm I'm gonna want to keep my eye on this guy because he's paying yeah. attention. <laughs> um, so we get a lot like in the in the game, uh, the sort of back and forth is just personality stuff. But then when let's see, oh my god, where's Halden? He's taken to his bed in some discomfort. There are turtles crawling out of his arse. You know, I do not care for that. No, wait. Oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, oh. of course we have Tyrion thinking about where do whores go? Would Taisha forgive me? What would I even say to her? This is when he spots the ruins, uh, and the dwarf could see bone snappers basking in the sun, brown and black hummocks with jagged ridges down the center of their shells. A few saw the shy maid and slid down into the water, leaving ripples in their wake. This would not be a good place for a swim. I do really enjoy that. Like giant snapping turtles. Mm-hmm. No, thank you. This is also I, one of the alligators are quite bad enough. <laughs> I always think of turtles too, as being like so docile and, and like they wouldn't bother you as long as you don't bother them, which is not entirely true, but, it's but it's, but it's still what I choose to believe. Like I just decide that that is going to be what it is and I won't hear anything other than that um but i know it's a complete fabrication like i am i am also aware (laughs) but but i don't want it to be the other way so i just choose to believe that like they wouldn't hurt a fly meanwhile Tyrion is like yeah i don't want to get naked in front of the moor but also i don't want to be in that water with those fucking things that are like you know my size or bigger they could snap me in half that's a real concern you guys don't you guys aren't giving it the sort of like (laughs) 
you know, respect that it deserves. Um, so let's see. It was another turtle, a horned turtle of enormous size. It's dark green shell mottled with brown and overgrown with water moss and crusty black river mollusks. It raised its head and bellowed, a deep-throated thrumming roar, louder than any warhorn Tyrion had ever heard. We are blessed, Isola was crying loudly as, st as tears streamed down her face. We are blessed, we are blessed. Which, uh, the idea of it being louder than a warhorn, I was just like, Hmm. really wild hmm. um and y yandri says it was him the old man of the river and Tyrion says why not gods and wonders always appear to attend the birth of kings hmm. what does that mean i don't know what that means okay. um yeah like the birth of he says kings instead of what you would think would be queens considering where he's on his way to yeah so i don't know if he's just you know that, that this is just a turn of phrase and he just opted not to tweak it you know so it matches with daenerys like right on the nose or if he's really saying something um yeah i really don't know what to do with this that's fair yeah it's um <laughs> <laughs> And when uh, when they're having the lesson with young Griff, there's I wanted to just ask. Well, I can't want to ask, but you're not really going to answer me. Maybe you can't. And it might be in Austin's info corner. But they have Griff recount the story about the tigers and the elephants. Yes. Um, let me see if there's something here. Do do do. Oh, um, <laughs> this is funny. So this is from. Austin's info corner. We meet another one of Tyrion's traveling companions, Septa Lamour, who is introduced in such an odd way. I was worried I had missed her introduction in the last Tyrion chapter. The fact that she has given birth has led to a ton of crazy fan theories on who she might be. Um, I Ooh. think she's a nobody, is Austin's assessment. Ah, what do you think? I don't. I, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if she was somebody, but it's not ultimately like she's not that important. Okay. Maybe she's the the mother of somebody more important. Mm. Um, there's a one of the guesses he mentions here is that she's the mother of the sand snake Tyene Sand, whose mother was oh. said to be a Septa. Interesting. Uh, but you know, I don't have as good a grasp on all of the lore and names. So it's not, a, like, I am not as good at coming up with theories regarding very tertiary characters when it's stuff that seems to be having to do with the main plot. I can keep it more straight, mm -hmm. but there's so much going on in these books with like the history and stuff that I don't like fully remember. And gotcha. other people will come up with much better theories than me. Mm. Um, hmm. He also mentions Tyrion talking about the acrobatics and how uh, Martin has said that he regrets having Tyrion do the acrobatics as A, it doesn't fit his character and B, he has since found out it would be incredibly hard, if not impossible, for someone with dwarfism to pull off some of these tricks. Oh. Um, which I remember being mentioned in the first book, so I found it surprising that it's brought up again here because I kind of thought that he would just drop it. But instead, he just brings it back up, which, I mean, I guess if you've already stated it, you may just want to be consistent in that right. way. But I was sort of surprised that it wasn't going to be, we're just all going to pretend that never happened kind of thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Because that was kind of what I was expecting. Mm. Just let's all put our heads down, we'll do the Marge Simpson with the hand up, looking away. <laughs> Um, also, Tyrion talks about the possibility of finding one of the lost books of Septon Barth. As he says, Barth was the hand of King Jaehaerys, the man we see in the prologue of House of the Dragon. Despite being a Septon, he was more open to learning about magic than any maester, and is arguably the best hand to the king in Westeros history. I believe Martin has said, if you see someone cite Barth's view or theory on something, it is almost always correct. Oh. Yeah. Mm, that's good to know. 
Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's that chapter. Not, not a lot happening, just to flavor, you mm-hmm. know, and, uh, sort of absorbing the atmosphere and learning a little bit more about the personalities of the people that we're traveling with. So yeah, let me go to Davos. <laughs> Davos is having a bad time in general of just like it, the the news that he is getting and the outlooks are not good. Um, yeah, it, this- nothing really seems to be like uh, happening in his favor for his mission here. Of all the things that go left for Davos in this chapter, when he realizes that no one is even talking about fucking Stannis. <laughs> was probably yep. like the harshest thing of the whole chapter where they are out there, you know, they just went through this thing at the wall. They've just faced these, you know, whites and others. And uh, Davos is doing all this traveling, trying to treat on his behalf. And nobody gives a fuck. Nope. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> it's giving Jeb Bush. It's such a bummer. Please clap. <laughs> Please clap. I cannot believe he said that out loud. You just oh accept that they didn't clap and you fucking move on, dude. What are you nope. doing? Nope. 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 That is a like a fucking horror show. Like, you guys, let's all keep it real. That is like all of our one of our deepest fears. Yes. Like public public speaking is already like one of the number one fears people have, even though that might change now that there's so much like social media and going live and stuff like that but used to be public speaking was like the number one thing people were afraid of and to bomb like that to for people to just be so unmoved by anything that you've said by your very presence and then he actually vocalized it he said it out loud Mm -hmm. with cameras running so that it's now captured forever and ever and ever it's the shorthand for your pathetic Yep. 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 Can you? <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. I but, really uh, like uh, you guys, the fucking, oh, the feeling in my stomach every time I think about that. I just, mm-hmm. it cringe is an inadequate word. Not even, you know? it doesn't even come close. It does not come yeah. close. That is, it needs its own new word for that moment. I don't, I don't know, but we need a new word. For it. <laughs> extreme cringe cringe <laughs> um so so okay we start off with oh you know what i forgot to mention too uh in the in the last chapter that part of the deal with like playing the shivas game was that they are playing for secrets mm-hmm. um so and Tyrion had been saying that he was getting beaten all the time by the half maester like just completely and he tr- does the whole oh, i'm just luring you into a false sense of security um but yeah we'll play for secrets griff would cut my tongue out afraid are you i would be if i were you and so he says the day you defeat me at shivas will be the day turtles crawl out my arse <laughs> so when it's mentioned later he's in his room turtles are crawling out of his arse right. It means that he has lost. Mm -hmm. So presumably Tyrion has gotten a secret out of him, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, And it's really downplayed. So I don't know how long it's going to be before I fucking get it because it's really like not, you know, made a big deal of like the way we find out is done in such a roundabout way. Um. How it could be, and it could be. You sound so like like you're trying not to be really mad, but you sound I'm really trying. mad right now. I'm a little mad. I'm a little mad. But, Alexa, uh, play I, hose, mad. Because <laughs> I don't know who the secret's about. I don't know whose secret it was. Like the maester could have told Tyrion his own secret, you know, something about himself, or it could be about anybody that's on the ship or people who aren't on the ship too. You know, mm-hmm, I can't wait mm-hmm. to find out what it is. Um. You know, maybe it'll be tied into my feeling that something's weird with Griff. Maybe that's a secret. Um, mm. I don't know. But yeah, they go from them playing that game to the sighting of the big the, the big turtles. The big turtles. Yay. 
Um, all right. So Davos, the the whole start of this is a sort of introduction to the vibe of White Harbor. And uh, I do really enjoy that there's like a guy he traveled with that was saying that all of the harbors have a different scent to them that you can tell what they're like from the smell. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Old Flower was as or Old Town was as flowery as a perfumed dowager. Lannisport was a milkmaid, fresh and earthy, with wood smoke in her hair. King's Landing reeked like some unwashed whore. But White Harbor scent was sharp and salty and a little fishy, too. She smells the way a mermaid ought to spell, Roro said. She smells of the sea. <laughs> and as he comes in, he's just trying to see, is there any, like, indication here which side Wyman is on? Because I had heard that he was standing strong for the Starks, but I don't see any wolf's heads around he also doesn't see any lions either. So he's trying to be like optimistic, like, okay, maybe he hasn't thrown it with anybody. Maybe this is, maybe this is a little weird yeah. for me. Yeah. He's, he's hoping it is in fucking, it's futile though. Like it's, he's hoping in fucking a backing because yeah. it's not work. It's not going to work out for him, but he comes in really just like, maybe there's still a chance. Um, there's not a chance. And he ends the, up. Uh, the blind <laughs> bastard always made him count the seals whenever Cobblecat set sail. The more seals there were, Roro said, the more lucky, the more luck they would have. There were no seals now. A wiser man would see a caution in that. If I had a thimble full of sense, I would have gone with Sala. Yeah, he says this a couple times in this chapter. I feel like where he's just like, I could just go home. I could go to my wife and sons, you know, where am I going to go now? I could just go home and I desperately want him to just go home. I know he's not gonna, I don't think he's gonna, but, uh, but yeah, I just want him to go If he home. did, would you like lose respect for him? At this point in the game, probably not. This late, yeah. this late hour. Yeah. No, I would have like maybe a book or two ago, but now because mm -mm. Stannis yeah. isn't isn't the man that he was or is claiming to be. He's not living up to his own ideals, like we talked about in the last episode or so. Uh, this is this is loyalty for loyalty's sake at this point. That you know, mm. <clears throat> interesting. Yeah. Um. um so he g comes. I, I do really enjoy the tone of him coming to the harbor here because like he's been here before so there's a lot of like oh this place is still here you know that mm -hmm. that uh the kind of checking for things that you don't even necessarily intend to like go patronize but you just wonder is that bookstore still there is that cigarette stall still open right. you know right 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 i just kind of enjoy that um and he sees warships. The sight of her sent a knife through his hopes. Her hull was black and gold. Her figurehead a lion with an upraised paw. Lion star, read the letters on her stern, beneath a fluttering banner that bore the arms of the boy king on the iron throne. A year ago, he would not have been able to read them, but Maester Pylos had taught him some of the letters back on Dragonstone. And I do, I always forget how recently he has come to reading. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so oh my god oh what was that sorry guys i had something on a shelf that was like and it just slid off oh my god weird. you're having the worst stuff with shelves lately listen stuff is just not stable around me and I can't <laughs> <a> <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah the idea of like i previously would not have been able to understand what this meant what an interesting feeling you know like as you get older, you run into that less and less because you learn less and less, mm -hmm. to be honest, you know? And I just think that that's a really, like, what a, a strange sensation that must be for what used to be sort of impenetrable just markings mm -hmm. to now have real meaning for you. And they did the thing on the show where they made that a plot point where what's Stannis's daughter's name was teaching him how Shireen. to read or, 
while he was in the yeah while he was in the dungeon yeah um and that's just like not a thing at all in the books um and so i had forgotten who taught him how to read so when this little bit comes up i was like oh that's right <laughs> And, um, yeah, they don't have the same kind of like super tight relationship that they did in the show. And um, I guess like, you know, I don't know if she's going to get burned like she did in the, in the show, but that because we got to know her and her relationship with Davos, that made that even more, you know, horrifying because in the book, I don't really know Shireen. She's not really a, she's like a nothing. Mm-hmm. Not that, not that, not that it will be won't be sad if they burn her alive. It's still going to be awful, but there's not going to be like an emotional, you know, connection. Yeah, um, the definitely. way the way that they had it on the show. Um, so yeah, this fucking Lion Star ship is is docked here, and this is this is not great news for us. No, for our He's man, so this, is, this is this isn't what we wanted to see when we got here. Um. I just hate like how much nothing is actually pointing to the uh, he just holds out hope for so long even though nothing is going their way it's just Mm -hmm. y'all yeah I just want him to like I will be honest if he did ditch and go home I probably would lose a little bit of respect for him but not exactly because he failed to stay loyal more because I feel like there are so many things that have happened at this point that should have made you ditch that finally just ditching because you're like, well, we're not going to win. Oh, well, I see. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he was just a, he was doing bad shit though. He wanted to like kill a child that he didn't, that had been like in his care. That was the descendant mm-hmm. of a brother of his. Like if that weren't, enough i judge you a little bit for it seeming a lot more about just like pure self-preservation and not your ethics i wouldn't blame him for it but i would just kind of you know what i mean it just it's got like but why now why now yeah you know now now that you're losing now all of a sudden it's like that's the that's the line you can't cross because you're gonna lose yeah i see what you mean but um yeah for me i even that I uh, I hadn't even thought of it in that way um, because I'm just so ready for him to fucking call this a fucking day. I really yeah. am. <laughs> uh, but the way this ends, it doesn't seem like that's on the table for us and for him. But um, the next thing he does is, y'all, this place where he goes to hang out, this like worst place of all the worst Fish places. Foot yard? Oh no, that's the place. No, I this gotcha. is the eel. This is the something eel. Yeah. Where the wine he goes to fish yard, yard first and talks to the guy who buys an apple from. So, oh my God, this is so funny. I, I want to talk about that first. Yeah, go ahead. Talk about that. <laughs> um, I do. In, the cobbled square had a fountain in its center. A stone merman rose from its waters, 20 feet tall from tail to crown. His curly beard was green and white with lichen, and one of the prongs of his trident had broken off before Davos had been born. Yet somehow, he still managed to impress. Old Fishfoot was what the locals called him. The square was named for some dead lord, but no one ever called it anything but Fishfoot Yard. And there's a woman who's washing her underwear in the fountain and hanging them off the trident to dry, which I just find endlessly hilarious. That you've got this like majestic statue that he describes as managing to still impress. And she's like, mm-hmm. my panties need somewhere in the sun. <laughs> and just come right here. Like, okay, I guess. <laughs> um, and he buys the apple, which sucks, by the way, it's from this terrible, apple seller. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and gossips a little bit about what's going on here. Like, he sees all of these people that are living huddled in, they basically have like a slum area here. And dude is like, they're running from the bastard of Bolton, who's a lunatic. Mm-hmm. And davos is like oh man they're coming here because there's no war here and now i'm trotting up about to fuck it all up for them which is true a little bit i do appreciate the self-awareness in that Mm -hmm. because you know it's like i don't know how much it helps that you know and you're doing it anyway 
But I mean, I feel like a lot of us fall into that camp, self aware mm-hmm. and doing it anyway. I mean, that's, yeah. hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. <laughs> All right. Point <laughs> You didn't need to be so mean about it. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, so when she's like, so what are they like, how do they get by? He says, well, you know, begging, stealing. A lot of girls are selling their bodies and a lot of boys are also selling their bodies, but in a different way. They're joining up mm-hmm. with the army and getting a bed. And um, Davos is like, ah, so he's raising a little, a little bit of an army, a little, little, mm-hmm. you know, a little some something, something, maybe not a full, you know, ten thousand man troop or whatever, but he's trying to do a little something. And uh, he, Davos is like, does Lord Wyman mean to join up with the bastard? And the Apple Seller is just like, this guy is so surly, y'all. He says, next time he comes down here, I'll just ask him. <laughs> I fucking cackled so bad <laughs> if he comes down here hunkering for an apple I'll, let, I'll, I'll you know pick his brain a little bit uh, I heard his daughter was to wed some fray I heard that too but his lordship forgot to invite me to the wedding you gonna finish that give me he just tastes like the apple seeds back uh, I don't know why but I laughed so hard through that whole thing he just was so like, this is the guy that works at my, like, gas station. You know? This <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. Sometimes there'll be, uh, it's so weird, like, uh, something that we think of as an air quotes, like, modern attitude, you know? And mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then it will show up in these, these types of high fantasy books and will feel, like, very out of place at first. But then you pause for a second and you think, no, this is just how people can be sometimes, like regardless of the genre or the time or whatever. Sometimes people are just like this. (laughs) Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I got better shit to worry about. It's weird that you think I would know. Why are you bothering me? You got your apple. Go away. (laughs) I was watching something on my phone. Please leave me. Right. (laughs) <laughs> like I been, fucking just started to try like talking about the stock market or some shit with like <laughs> guy who's like you know selling cigarettes at the stop and sip or whatever the fuck like what <laughs> the guy just wants me to buy my shit and please get the fuck out of his face that's what he would like to happen <laughs> so then he's like all right i'm gonna go ahead and he passes all of these like lovely promising sounding spots a young girl selling cups of fresh milk uh, a spot where they make fried cod crisp and golden brown outside and flaky Mm. white within a brothel cleaner than most where a sailor could enjoy a woman without fear of being robbed or killed and a brew house where they made a black beer so thick and tasty that a cask of it could fetch as much as arbor gold in bravos and the port of ibn it was wine he wanted though Sour, dark, and dismal. <laughs> so he, after all of those lovely sounding places, he's like, let me go to this fucking dive here. The right. lazy eel. Yeah, this place is like beyond a dive. This is the dregs <laughs> of everything that White Harbor has to offer. And it is, again, the wine is brown. I feel like that tells you everything you want to know. Yeah. Like also the whores are old, but I don't think that really is that important. I think we're talking about the gray meat and the brown wine. Those are the two things that are really setting the scene for us, I think. Meat pies full of lard and gristle that were inedible on their best days and poisonous Ooh. on their worst, <laughs> which is very funny to me. <laughs> oh, you're taking your life in your hands, kids. Yeah. But this is the place where a certain type of person comes and they he calls like pirates like he calls them like they gossip more than like old ladies Mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. and this is the kind of place you go to when you want to sit in the dark and you want to hear what everybody else is fucking talking about which is exactly what he ends up doing it's like finding a little corner where he can just be by himself and uh just nestles in and waits for like because when he shows up it's mostly empty it's like one whore that like offers offers like hey you want to fuck or whatever and 
Then he says no, and she just laughs at him. <laughs> yes. And says something that makes her friend laugh, which, you know, she probably said, you know, he's probably got no dick or whatever, you know, whatever insult she says to him. Yeah. But, uh, and yeah, he just kind of like hangs out for a couple of hours until people start coming in. And then the stuff that he starts to overhear, mm, there is a lot of information flowing through this little dank cellar of a bar. Yep. Yeah. Tywin Lannister killed by his dwarf son. Corpse stunk. Lady of the Eerie had been murdered by a singer. Littlefield ruled now. Balin Greyjoy had died and his brothers were fighting for the Seastone Chair. Sander Clegane had turned outlaw, plundering and killing. Mir and Lys and Tyrosh were embroiled in another war. A slave revolt is raging in the East. Other tidings were of greater interest. Robert Glover was in the city and had been trying to raise men with little success. Lord Manderley had turned a deaf ear to his pleas. White Harbor was weary of war, he was reported to have said. That was bad. The Riswells and the Dustins had surprised the Ironmen on the Fever River and put their longships to the torch. That was worse. <clears throat> and now the Bastard of Bolton was riding south with Hothar Umber to join them for an attack on Moat Kaelin. The whore's bane, his own self, claimed a riverman who'd just bought, uh, brought a load of hides and timber down the white knife. With 300 spearmen and 100 archers, some Hornwood men have joined them, and Sirwins too. That was worst of all. Mm. Lord Wyman best sends some men to fight if he knows what's good for him. Roos, he's the warden now. White Harbor's honor bound to answer his summons. What did any Bolton ever know of honor? Laura Wyman's got no place. Well, won't go no place. He's too bloody fat. <laughs> I heard how he was ailing. All he does is sleep and weep, they say. He's too sick to get out of bed. Too fat, you mean. Fatter things got not to do with it. The lion's got his son. No one oh. spoke of King Stannis. No one even seemed to know that his grace had come north to help defend the wall. No one seemed to be giving them so much as a thought. Devastating. I I know, it just sucks. <laughs> it really does. But you know, out of sight, out of mind. And they are so far removed from everything that's happening, you know? Like, it's important shit happening up at the wall. We all know that. But it is miles and miles away from everyone else. And it just, it just doesn't seem like, like these people, it's, it's fucked up because it's such an important thing that's happening up there, you know, that has consequences yes. for the entire realm. And yet these people are still oblivious to it. This late in the series, people are still not knowing <laughs> that mm -hmm. the dead are like on the move. It's crazy talk. And then eventually he's like, wait, his son... I thought they killed his son, the phrase. And they're like, oh, yeah, that one, yeah. But Sir Wyless is alive, and he's a captive. And he's like, oh, God, now he's got, like, he just mm -hmm. di didn't realize that there was even a second option. And he knows that for himself, if somebody had his son, he would do whatever the fuck they said to do. Like, it would be no yep. question, you know? Yep. Um, yeah, this is all just terrible news for him. Every yeah. time somebody opens their mouth when they're done talking, he's in a worse situation than he was before they started speaking. Um, and they start talking about dragons now. And mm -hmm. people still don't fucking believe the dragons either, which is, again, crazy to me. <laughs> but, but this shit is happening on the other side of the world as far as they're concerned. So. So and yeah, it could just feel like, like everybody who tells them just wants attention and is making up like yeah. wild stories. Like, if like if someone came and told me about some dragons right now, I would be at very best skeptical, <laughs> <laughs> dubious. What might I say? <laughs> yeah. So so I don't. I'm trying to be mindful of my criticism of these people being like, oh my god, I can't believe they don't understand that dragons are a thing now, right? Like, because why on earth would they? There's no reason for them to believe that any of these stories are true. But then, I don't know. People keep talking about these dragons, though. Like, the stories are not going away, but they're just coming in from... I guess the people they're coming in from leave a lot to be desired. People are not like, oh, you're somebody that's wholly trustworthy. 
So I'm going to take right. your word for it. You know, like the source, the source is so suspect that it's hard to believe it. Someone said to the idea of dragons that, uh, what did they say? Um, the beggar king's been dead for years. Like, if he was still alive, then maybe I would give your dragon story a little bit more credence. <laughs> and they mentioned the princess. Uh, one was Rhaegar's daughter. The other was his sister. Um, I know her name. Yeah. And they also mentioned uh, there was that Prince Rhaegar had a son, a baby. So they're like trying to keep track of everybody here. Um, so, so let's see. It says, um, we knew she had a son and a daughter because those are the babies that were, that they killed when they killed her, that fucking, um, Dorn, not Dorn. Who was his name? Oberyn was trying to avenge, right? The, well, let's see. I'm trying to keep track of everybody because like the, uh, Prince Rhaegar's son, let's see, wasn't there some princess to Astahor? Uh, one was Rhaegar's daughter. The other was his sister, who was Dana. Um, and they're like, no, that was Old King Baelor's wife. So, yeah, I think it's... Oh, my God, this is killing me. I have such a, a hard time keeping this straight, you guys. I'm so sorry. But Rhaegar's children are the ones that... Did the I, mountain killed, right? Right. I thought so. Let me see. Gregor. Oh my God. Tell him. What, tell him, Pippin. <laughs> there's there's an Amazon, I think, <laughs> delivery. So sorry about that, guys. Um, that's why I'm so distracted here as well, because I could hear him like starting up. I could hear the engine revving <laughs> in his bark. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find the spot here. Uh, where they describe exactly what Gregor did. Retaliation. Doo, doo, doo. Um, oh, this is the... Oh, I hate when they do this. They have whole Wikipedia pages for only the television version. Mm -hmm. You know? it's just, And then I, I don't realize that that's it because it's a, it's an official Wikipedia page. So it's not like distinct when I open it, that that's only who they're talking about. Oh, I see. <sighs> Y'all. I wish that I was not so bad at keeping all of this straight because it is such a major part of the story. And I know that people listening are infuriated and I'm so sorry. Um, so yeah, Gregor killed Aegon in front of Elia Martell. And he then rapes and murders her. And also, there was like an, a literal infant whose brains he smashes out. Yeah. I think. And that's yeah. the girl, right? So there's two I babies. I think so, yeah. So he kills. And then, so so there's Rhaegar, Viserys, and Daenerys who are siblings. And then Rhaegar is married to the Dornish chick, and they have two babies. And then, of course, later on, we find out that he and Lyanna Stark had a baby and that's Jon Snow. So those are the babies. Oh wait, Thank here you. it is. It says Gregor entered the nursery of the infant Prince Aegon, killed the baby present by dashing the boy's head against a wall. Then he raped and murdered Aegon's mother, supposedly with the boy's blood and brains still on his hands. So it only mentions one child and the princess. Oh. Not two children. Wow. That's all it says here. I thought she had, I thought that she had just given birth. Like, she, oh, or maybe I'm confusing Liana and Jon Snow's story. Because she had just given birth. Oh, yeah, her. All right. I might be confusing um, my, my ladies who were murdered in horrific fashion. I might be confusing Right, yeah. Them. Well, she died right. of natural causes. Lyanna Stark dies right after childbirth, right? She's right. She's not killed. She just dies. Right. Why is Ned there? Oh, because he's fighting outside the tower and he goes, okay, right. all right, gotcha. Because, yeah, Rhaegar okay. is there. And as far as they all know, Rhaegar, 
like kidnapped and raped her. Right. Okay. That's a lot to keep track of. I know. And like, I know that these are major things and it shouldn't be that hard, but you guys, my brains have been such mush lately that I, uh, plus covering like spoil me stuff and keeping all those names and everything straight. It's really actually impressive that I'm doing as well as I am. <laughs> Um, so they are talking about the the people at the bar are also having the same trouble that we just had trying to remember who's who and what yeah. their names are and they finally Davos is like it's Daenerys yeah. <laughs> and, and yes because they are just throwing out different names trying to see what sticks Um, and he tells them what her name is and then that she was named for the Daenerys who wed the Prince of Dorne during the reign of Darian II. And then Davos says, and I don't know what became of her. Which we do. <laughs> yeah, and this uh, Bravosi is like, oh, I do. I heard about her coming to some guy asking for a passage to the Westeros and he was like, well, I took her to a captain to talk to the dude about it but he was uninterested because there is no money in doing that plus dragons are super dangerous and they're not gonna mm-hmm. you know he would did not want his whole shit burned down <laughs> and he describes her silver hair and purple eyes and uh i'm like it says really davos did not join in he knew what had befallen the slow-eyed maid i don't know what that is um let me see. Where Let's is see it? if so Austin's info corner mentions it. Um, when b- 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 corrects the sailors, mm, no, nope, well, not mentioned. So I don't know why he knows about the slow eyed maid and what happens to it. I don't recall. The Do gods you know? were cruel. Mm-mm. The gods were cruel to let a man sail across half the world, then send him chasing a false light when he was almost home. That captain was a bolder man than me, Davos thinks, as he makes his way to the to the door. I don't know. Oh, here it is. Um, when he was at the sisters and eating that stew and Godric tells him the spices were from a slow-eyed maid. He explains the ship sailing to Bravos was blown from the bite into the rocks of Sweet Sister. Oh... So that's what it is. Okay. The captain refused Daenerys because spices were more profitable and less dangerous, but then eventually. Uh, instead, the ship may have eventually been lured to its doom by a false light of the sistermen. So the it's it was not an accident. They try and act like, oh, what a shame. The, mm-hmm. the ship went, but it's like they're that's purposely... What they do. Yeah, and so that's what Davos means in this right here when he says that how cool it is that a man yeah. went all the way around the world and then fucking dies because he he follows this false light, which is also kind of because when he says that I was like oh metaphor because we got Davos Very out much here so. following you know following all of these fucking false lights, but uh, mm-hmm. I didn't realize he was talking about a literal situation like something that had actually happened. Um, and uh. Oh, he has a little bit of a flashlight, a flashlight, a flashback about, <laughs> no, I don't know where that came from That's when he funny. was younger and he had dreamed of being like a sailor and making all these, you know, these voyages around the world. Um, and the, the years went dancing by like moths around the flame and somehow the time had never been quite right. Uh one day when the war is done and Stannis sits the throne, then he can take his wife and his kids and they'll go travel around the world. Maybe in an RV. You know, he's like... He's, he's 10 days from retirement. Exactly. You know, he's getting too old for this shit. And hmm. uh, I feel like this is this is Davos is going to die soon, right? Because he's having hmm. these feelings about wanting to go home. And this is like telling me that oh, my man might not be here much longer. I don't know. I mean, if this were <laughs> Walking Dead, then I would have yeah. <laughs> Um. So what else is he here tonight while he's in this place? He's thinking about going home. Um, he goes to another bar, I think. He leaves the eel. 
and is thinking about going to some other bars to hear what's going on there. But finally decides not to do that and realizes that he's come, he says, I've come too late. Um, what must I do now? He thinks, and this is when he's like, I could just fucking go home. I could go back to Sisterton. I could uh, buy a horse and ride to King's Road to tell Stannis that, you know, we're out of fucking luck. Yeah. Yeah. I really wanted him to just be like, I'm going to go home. But instead, he goes walking and finds himself at this stairs, these steps, and starts heading up. They're called the castle stair. And he's going up to the fucking castle, y'all. He's going to see Lord Manderley because he is still about Stannis' business. It seems. Yeah. Yeah. I really thought that, I mean, I knew he wouldn't, but I really wanted him to just be like, you know what? That's it. I'm going home to my wife and the kids that I have left. Enough of this. But that is not. Yeah. It's, it's just like, what gets me a lot too is just how, and I don't know for sure that this is true because I am never inside Stannis's head, but I continually feel like stannis does not appreciate davos and everything that he and like i know he must to a point because he made him hand so he can like Mm -hmm. recognize you know but it's not enough i i just (laughs) keep being like sir what are you putting this man has he not done and release him you know, just be like, <laughs> send him into retirement. I know mm-hmm. that there's no reason to do that when you have not yet won. Like, that's a foolish, but, but also, I don't know. he's kind of, hasn't he it. earned it? What else, what else does he have to give up in your name? He's already lost. Exactly. Kids, you know, what else does he have to sacrifice in your pursuit of power? How, no matter how justified and righteous you think it is that you should be on the throne, like how much does this one man have to give up? But that's a really a question for Davos, isn't it? How mm, much do you true. have to give up, sir, before you decide to make some decision? And I wonder too, like, if you are engaged in activity that is that is like um, smuggling, right? That has no honor. You're basically just like a step away from being a thief, you know? Sure. And you suddenly get told that despite your past, you can have a life of honor. You know, you can choose to behave honorably. And what, especially if your life was forfeit and the person decides to spare you, that's pretty serious, right? That's going to, that's going to trigger your, your, we made a joke earlier about trauma bonding, but yeah, it's going to, it's going to kind of trigger some of those bits, I think. And he just feels this overwhelming sense of not just loyalty to Stannis, but I owe Stannis. He feels like obligation to Stannis and are in a very, very real way um, that has overtaken his feelings of responsibility to everything else in his life, his family, his children, his wife, everything. Um, And I guess that's needed you know, if you're going to throw in with a king, that's what you got to yeah. do. But it's wild to me to 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 go in with somebody that's not your family or your chosen. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I'm mm-hmm. having a hard time imagining what situation where I could feel so indebted to someone else that I start to sacrifice, like my partner, my husband, my family. You know what I mean? It's just very hard much, for yeah. me to wrap my brain around. And I also, I think part of my feeling of sort of being mystified is like, I, I don't see in Stannis what Davos sees in terms of, obviously Davos believes that Stannis deserves to be king and would make a good king. Mm -hmm. And I am not there. I at disagree all. at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Did I, uh, I, I all- want to see the same thing as you, sir. I really want to, but I just don't. 
He mm. has lost all credibility. He had a bit of a claim at the beginning, if we're going to believe that you can have a line of succession from somebody who steals the throne. Like, if we're saying that's a thing that can be done, then he had, you know, a legitimate claim. But his actions have made all of that, like, as far as I'm concerned, null and void at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's really the thing is like, well, it was originally stolen. So how how valid is this to begin with? Mm -hmm. And I mean, (laughs) possession is nine tenths of the law. At this point, I'm like, I don't know, man, those Lannisters just feel like they are in place. Like I'm kind of feeling like you missed your shot. I, right, the fact that right. nobody's talking about him at all anymore is also just such a in, yep. such an indictment of how he has been written off, which if you have lost people's respect to that degree, I don't know how you get that back. Yeah, you can't. You have to be seen as a force for people to obey you and fear you yep. and be willing to do what you tell them. And you're not even on the table as part as a like, player in the game at all anymore you like know, if i'm not mistaken these people are basically acting as if there is not really a war for the throne anymore yeah right yeah like, essentially just, that shit is a wrap really you know great joy is dead you know stark is dead uh nobody's talking about Stannis whatsoever really been dead like there's not even like this war is happening but it's because it feels like it's just because we released all of these madmen out into the world and they're still fighting because people that's what people fucking do but it doesn't, mm-hmm. it doesn't feel like you know the war of the five kings and you know it it feels something like something else now yeah and yeah people aren't even talking about anybody else coming and taking the throne like they're talking about the boy on the throne like it's just a given now like that's that's who won the mm-hmm, person who's mm-hmm. sitting on it right now is, is who won yeah poor Stannis he does not even realize that this they have already called the match he doesn't yeah. know it oh that's so sad <laughs> and and it's even sadder feeling this and then watching Davos just like go in there and take this risk because it's mm-hmm. just so oh it just feels yeah, like so for what? futile. Yeah, for why? Yeah. For what? <laughs> I walked in for what? Um, <laughs> so let's see. Is that how? Oh, wait. There was another thing that I wanted to mention too, because uh, it's in Austin's notes here about how Ramsey Bolton is going south with uh, Hawther Horsbane Umber, who was the one that was sitting with Ramsey in the, t- the reek chapter. When we were like, at the yeah, table. Who are these guys. Yeah. Yeah. We wanted to know who they were. Oops. Sorry. Moving my mic. Yep. Um, so they're going to go up against the ironborn is their intention and take back Moat Kalen. Which yeah, I don't those... know if you recall the importance of Moat Kalen as like a particular spot on the map, but it's basically just... like, Yeah. I just remember that they were out there, you know, the Iron Border out there under Euron's leadership, uh, encroaching, you know, and not just sticking to their normal behavior of, like, what do they call it? Reaving? <laughs> yes, um, yes. But, like, he's taking them to, like, really go after places they normally wouldn't. And so I didn't remember the specifics about Mo Kalen, but I remembered that he's got them behaving in a way that is like people would be like they're getting a little too bold you know they need to be they need to be checked so but again even with that war doesn't feel like it has anything to do with being a war for the fucking iron throne that feels like its own thing you know the way people definitely about it you know yeah and moat kalen is basically like you're not getting from south to north or vice versa if you can't get through Moat Kalen is in a spot that there's like going around is such a huge undertaking that it's necessary to have it. If you're going to be moving groups of any size. So if the ironborn have taken it, that's a really big problem. If you are the warden of the North as Roose Bolton is, that looks super bad for you. So you got to go get it back. That's, part of the job and uh i would like to know what the iron men are doing there what you uh they as you've mentioned normally go 
place to place in Reeve, but now they're setting up in a, a stronghold. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, you might want to go get our eyes on that, see what's going on down there. Just a drop. <laughs> so, all right. And I think that's about, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> Queen Selyse had feasted Sala and his captains the night before the fleet had set sail. Cotter Pike had joined them and four other high officers of the Night's Watch. Princess Shireen had been allowed to attend as well. As the salmon was being served, Sir Axel had entertained the table with the tale of a Targaryen princeling who kept an ape as a pet. The prince liked to, dr- to dress the creature in his dead son's clothes and pretend he was a child, Sir Axel claimed, and from time to time he would propose marriages for him. The lords so honored had always declined politely, but of course they did decline. Even dressed in silk and velvet, an ape remains an ape, Sir Axel said. A wiser prince would have known that you cannot send an ape to do a man's work. The queen's men laughed, and several grinned at Davos. Mm-hmm. Those motherfuckers. I Y'all not cute. these guys so much. Y'all not Ugh. slick. You're not cute. We see- Get out of here. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> Davos, you don't have to stand here and take this. You can go home. Go home. <laughs> right. I he's like, I'm a better man than you, and he knows that, but like it says, but the memory still stung. That's what's so annoying when people get at you like that. Is like you can know that you need to let it roll off your back. Words are wind. They're pieces of shit and not worth whatever, you know. But you can't help the like instinctive response of ouch though. Right? That's not nice. Why are you being so mm-hmm. mean? But I do. What the fuck did I do? So, yeah. I don't know. I, I just, Davos deserves better. Hashtag Davos deserves better. <laughs> it's That's like all. he doesn't believe that to be true. Like, he feels like he, he has to, he's like making a penance or something, you mm-hmm. know? Like, I, like, maybe it is just guilt from his smuggling days or maybe... Maybe he got into some shit that's that's worse than smuggling. Maybe he was smuggling people. I don't know the fuck what he what he was doing, mm. but it's as if he feels like he has a debt that, not just to Stannis, but something else that he needs to like be making up for. I don't know, y'all. I get it. Stannis raised him up from his his baseborn life and made him a lord and made him hand and you know somebody taught him to read. I get it, but it. None of that feels like it's enough to really make it make sense to me, you know, or yeah. I'm just being really, really dense or I am just secretly not a good person. And I don't understand this type of loyalty, which could be part of the problem. <laughs> I think I'm, that's like what it is with for a lot of us. This kind of like really ride or die. Most of us don't really run like that. You know, and like, I mean, like I have been a particularly like I can, you know, be kind of ride or die, but it just depends Mm -hmm. on like exactly what I'm, you know what I mean? Like it's like some people would look at my relationship and be like, damn, I can't believe you that long would we've been through blah, 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 blah. But it's a different kind of ride or die situation. Like there's not like mm. I'm not gonna be ride or die for everything. Like some shit you're gonna do and I'm gonna have to be like, oh you are on your own for that. Yeah. Like I can't I mm, no. I can't be a part of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. You know, and I think it has a lot to do with being with someone who is having bad things that are happening to them versus supporting someone who's actively doing bad things that are harming other people, you know? Sure. Yeah. Forgiving somebody's past actions and moving forward is very different than continuing to like help them cause harm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the fucking bridge that Stannis has crossed, you know, Mm -hmm. he's, he's crossed over. And also just like, I, keep thinking about the conversation that he had with Jon Snow and how he, entitled he felt to just dismantling the Night's Watch, basically. Like, he mm-hmm. was expecting to be repaid for coming to their aid the way he is supposed to if he is king. Yep. He is expecting them to, like, pay him back. If this is mm-hmm. what you say your position is, 
you are not meant to expect to be supported in a war. You're doing yep. your duty and that's what yep. you're doing. And you should just accept that. And I know it sucks for you, but also that's what it means to like continue to uphold the ideals that you really claim you represent. That's 100%. you made that choice. So you got to stand by it, but he won't. And he's just so, he's so presumptuous in a way that I just cannot forgive. Like that is really the, the, what's the word I want here? I guess <laughs> presumption is the best word, but just the, the shock that he seems to have that John is not playing along. Oh, he's I mean, like, what world are you living in, my dude? Pikachu face. He's <laughs> like, fucking what? <laughs> yeah. <sighs> the way the way Stannis moves is very much with you owe me energy. You know, everybody fucking owes him. Like everything he does has strings attached, like you're saying. Mm, you know? Yeah. Um everybody fucking owes him something. Uh and nah. Sometimes you, you you're doing the thing because it's the thing that has to be done, not because you you then can turn around and charge somebody for it. Ah, get yes. out of here with that! You ain't no king of mine. Oh shit! <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. We are denouncing Stannis as the heir to the throne. Oh yeah! Like if yeah. you if you were gonna pick somebody for the throne right now, who you pick him? Oh God, I hate this question. Because we haven't really been, you know, I don't like right now in this moment, like I want to, I want to say Daenerys, but I need to see her leadership a little bit, you know, see what, how she handles these trials where she is, because that's what lead, being a leader is. Being a queen is not just having the name and the family name or the dragons or whatever, or the claim, like what kind of ruler are you going to be? And mm -hmm. I, she's got a lot of like good ideas about what it means to for people to be full and live their lives but she's still i gotta see how she moves and um do they have to be people who are in position to take the throne or can i just be picking any random just pick character? a name just pick anybody um ugh. right now i'm not seeing it for anybody i really am i'm not uh, Daenerys is probably the closest because mm -hmm. I she's at least somebody I can watch and try to like be like all right well how is she going to move through this how kind of choices is she going to make um I mean Tommen is doing all right <laughs> oh my god are you picking Tommen that's unexpected <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I really had not even considered that you were like going to go, you know, well, let's just stick with what we got. But wow. <laughs> All right. I mean, he comes with Cersei. Are you sure? Yeah, no, Tommen is not who I'm picking. Um, I guess Cersei's locked up for the moment. So. Um. Yeah. Like right now, who's running King's Landing? I guess it's the fucking High Sparrow. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if he wasn't so fucking such a zealot. And you know, fundamentalists can't have him fucking ruling. That's no good for anybody. God damn, no, no, thank you. <laughs> Littlefinger would probably be really good for the realm. He probably would make a good. Do team. you think? He probably would. He's very pragmatic. I mean, he's very selfish and he has his own ideals. But I think he would make decisions that were like smart with money. He would probably put the right people in the right places to, to get the jobs done because he knows people so well. He reads people really well. How interesting. I never actually stopped to ask myself if he would be a good ruler. All I thought about was his ambition and his like you know, his machinations behind the scenes and how mm -hmm. much he is underestimated. But I never stopped to think like, if he were to succeed, is that so bad? And yeah. I genuinely don't know how I feel about that. Now that you mention it, I gotta have to think like, on that a little bit. Yeah. Like once he gets what he wants, then he can turn those powers to something else. One would, right. you know, in theory, he might have to spend all that time just keeping himself in power because that's what power does, right? Once you get it, you want to hold on to it and you use all your energy to keep it. But say that wasn't a thing. Say he could just finally be in charge 
and he didn't have to spend every waking moment plotting on how to stay in charge. He would probably be really effective. <laughs> yeah, that's in, oh, wow, that's compelling. I also wonder, like, so much of what he has managed to accomplish so far has depended on everyone around him underestimating him. Mm -hmm. That if he gets into a position where people start to realize how effective he is, does that undercut his effectiveness? If people are no longer underestimating him, can he still get shit done? I think he can because people underestimate him because when it, it's an adversarial relationship. But if in this this world that I'm envisioning, if that's not at play in the immediate and he just has like a council of people who he's picked because he knows what they're capable of and that they're the right people for the right job. I think things could probably run smoothly for a little while Mm. at least. But again, because of the way power works, that utopia that I'm describing would be very short-lived, most likely. There's always going to be somebody plotting somewhere, and eventually his attention is going to have to be turned towards safeguarding, you know, his his rule. Right, yeah. And then then the stuff that you're bringing up comes into play because now he's – working from a position of power that's sort of ostentatious people know he's the king right so now they're not underestimating him anymore and then it becomes very tricky like how does he play the game when he can't be this underdog that people constantly overlook or dismiss which becomes Mm. an even more compelling thing yeah that's interesting Tyrion didn't come up at all he didn't because right now i'm a little irritated with Tyrion. yeah fair Right now, right now, he's not he's not showing me that he should he could rule right now. So I thought I of him like, and, and didn't say his name on purpose. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Tyrion works really well as hand. I don't know if I would want him as king. Like the figurehead that you choose is like ha- has to have a different energy. Mm-hmm. So a part of me would prefer him as like the supporting role because he is so clever and would continue probably to be underestimated that there is some advantage can you imagine like Peter is king and Tyrion has his hand (laughs) that would be something they're so adversarial because they each want to be the smartest person that I feel Mm -hmm. like in theory they could be great but their personalities would not allow it would it would combust it would be fucking spectacular to watch though (laughs) (laughs) man Mm. yeah that would be something well it is time to say hi to new patrons so this week we have got strawberry tree and John Herzog. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you signing up. Lovely patrons. Uh, I hope that you guys are enjoying the excellent content that you get exclusive to you if you become a patron. And if you're interested in checking that out, go to patreon.com slash unspoiled. Um, (laughs) I've been listening to this uh, podcast called the Comfy Cozy Witch Podcast, which is very adorable. And she will say hi to her new patrons. That list is so long. I swear to God, the other day I was listening, I fast forwarded like 30 seconds and she was still going. And I was like, what? Wow. Wow. (laughs) But I just like, I also appreciate that I can just really focus on the two names that I have in front of me and not, uh, have to rush through it so yeah again thank you guys so much welcome Mm patreon.com slash unspoiled you can sign up to be a paid patron or you can sign up to just follow the content for free i post announcements questions for what people are looking for i recently posted about starting a um, witchy book club and by witchy i do not mean like books with witches in them like fiction i meant practical guidebooks on how to begin establishing a practice and learning about herbs or 
tarot or, you know, those sorts of things. So if you are somebody listening who thinks that would be interesting, you should head over to patreon.com slash unspoiled and leave a comment on that post. Let me know what your schedule is like and when you're available, because it would not be a podcast. It would be an actual like chat meet up on voice channels on discord where we would read and talk together as a group. So it would be a really different like project than anything I've done previously. But uh, yeah, Rashawn gave me a bunch of like really cool books and I have found a lot of books uh, for free on Kindle Unlimited that I downloaded and then I just never get around to reading on my own time. And I felt like maybe establishing a group like this would help me have a focus and actually sit down and read because it's going to be time to talk about it soon. So I thought probably there are other people out there that have this experience as well. As it gets older, as we get older, it gets harder to set aside time to do things that are for pleasure or for just personal enrichment and not for work or to keep your household running. And just hoping that maybe some people can relate and would want to participate in that. So I think that's everything. Is there anything else you wanted to add, Rashawn? No, ma'am. No, all right. ma'am. Well, thank you guys all again for listening. We love you very much. And until next time, toodaloo, motherfuckers. Bye, guys. You're free. Cersei. All the friends. Hold on. Marin Tron. Tywin Lannister. Spoiled Network Podcast.